G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. And today I'm in the middle of a uh, little cluster of houses that's powered by my microgrid. This is uh, a cluster called Wombat Hollow here at Murumura Co-op. And we're an off-grid community. Uh, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. So we're one of the oldest uh, intentional communities in Australia. And it's where the Smart Energy Lab is based. Now, what I wanted to talk to you about today is uh, understanding sizing of a battery storage system, particularly when it's for off-grid. Now, uh, one of the challenges is, of course, is price. People go, oh, how much is it going to cost me? But really, it comes down to your choices of uh, load. Now, when I say load, basically, the appliances that you choose to run is going to determine <laughs> the size of everything, uh, the solar, the battery, even backup generator capacity. But let's just focus on the battery for a start. If you're a fully off-grid system, you have to consider that not every day is a sunny day, just like now, as the sun bursts out from behind a cloud. And uh, on less than optimal days, you're going to be running perhaps on a mixture of solar and battery. And if it's really overcast and heavy rain, uh, solar production drops to just a fraction of what it would normally. So you're more or less running completely on batteries. Now, that's uh, sizing decision is based on what we call days of autonomy, the number of days you can run without renewable energy input. And in the case of a battery system, that's going to make um, a big cost difference, the days of autonomy. How do you choose what those are? Well, it's uh, a couple of ways you can approach it. There is an Australian standard, ASNZS 4509 Part 2, which recommends that for a system without an automatic generator start, you should have five days of autonomy. Now, that's a lot of autonomy five days without any renewable input. But here uh, in um, Victoria, in winter time, that's probably not even enough. But there you go. Uh, but for a system with an automatic start backup generator, two days of autonomy is considered sufficient. So there you go. That's a good working range, two to five days. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, uh, we run a microgrid, which uh, is kind of effectively a grid for all of the homes here that have built in solar battery systems of their own, but they use the microgrid as kind of their backup. A bit like the real utility grid if you're a hybrid system. Now, uh, to do this, they call upon the microgrid whenever they don't have sufficient power. Also, they can export their surplus to the microgrid on a good day, so it's a win-win. Now, in terms of sizing of the microgrid, uh, we've got a system here which consists of uh, six SP Pros. Now these are the uh, the smaller SP Pros, the 481s, but we've got six of them and they're in three phase configuration, two per, two phase, two per phase, which gives us about 30 kilowatts, in fact exactly 30 kilowatts of continuous rated power. Now being SP Pros they have an enormous surge rating. They can do double that for like 30 minutes. Uh, they can do two and a half times that for 30 seconds. So it's a very impressive surge capacity and that's something you actually want in an off-grid inverter for starting up those tr problem loads like water pumps, compressors, um, old style air conditioners without inverter driven uh, motor compressors. So uh, surge rating is important. But when it comes to battery sizing, it's, it's all about two things, which is can the batteries deliver the power that you require? <laughs> G'day. Now, if I've piqued your interest, not just in battery sizing, but also in terms of microgrids, I'm actually running a course on the 24th and 25th of January in the year 2024. Uh, and it's an online course. It's two four-hour sessions, which are recorded, and you get to watch them afterwards uh, for as many times as you like. So you don't actually have to attend if you can't. This course is based on my years of experience of living on a microgrid. So um, here at the Smart Energy Lab, is situated inside a cooperative where there's 30 homes of which seven of them are connected to the microgrid. There's also an accommodation lodge for 20 plus people. There's a large teaching space. There's nine electric vehicle charging stations of which one of them is a 50 kilowatt DC charger. All of this run as an islanded microgrid, i.e. no utility grid otherwise. Anyway, if you're interested in the course, a link in the description, 24th, 25th of January. Check it out when you require it, so the amount of uh, peak amps that they can supply. And the other thing is how many days of autonomy can they give you when there is no renewable energy input. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, we've recently upgraded our microgrid system. We had initially uh, one stack of 20 uh, Power Plus Energy uh, Life 4838Ps. That gave us an 80 kilowatt hour stack. 
uh, with about 80% usable, that's 60 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Now we were cycling that every day on anything but a perfect sunny day. So they were basically one day of autonomy is all we had. So we've recently added a second um, uh, cabinet with another 20 of the Life 4838Ps giving us 160 kilowatt hours of total capacity um, around 120, 130 uh, kilowatt hours of usable capacity. And that's made a big difference. Just having that extra now two days of autonomy means that we can sort of limp through most weather cycles because unless it's really midwinter here, uh, we still get some solar input even on an overcast day because after all, it's not just the sun that's powering uh, our, our, our system. It's also the clouds and the reflected light from those clouds. So yeah, it's made a big difference. Now it's worth looking at sort of history too when you're doing an analysis of um, days of autonomy. Say you're wondering why uh, your generator's coming on all the time. If you've got any form of logging that you can look at and see what your state of charge of your battery system has been over successive days. And that can help you identify that you're a bit low on uh, capacity uh, in terms of storage and it might be a good idea to upsize it. But there's one more solution and this is probably the lowest cost solution of all just use less. I know, uh, some of the proponents call it negawatts. The negawatts are the watts that you never needed. So uh, negawatts can be your savior. How do you generate negawatts? Well, <laughs> you don't, you just turn stuff off. So a good uh, rule of thumb for um, off-grid systems is live by the sun. If you're a solar battery system, live by the sun. When it's sunny, go for broke. Do all your heavy lifting, uh, you know, washing, uh, heating, cooling, uh, water heating, all those things. And when it's not sunny for several days, ease off a little bit. Maybe hang off doing the washing, um, <laughs> put on an extra jumper, uh, put on those ceiling fans instead of the air conditioner. So live by the sun and having some form of monitoring really helps if you want to live by the sun. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, we use um, a monitoring system from Switched In, which is absolutely fabulous because it monitors many, many devices. I think I've got about 13 uh, systems being monitored by Switched In, which includes hot water systems, weather stations, uh, hybrid battery systems, uh, batteries themselves. Um, it's, it's pretty sophisticated. But uh, just having a little on-screen display uh, in, a, in a, an area that's regularly seen, so I've got sitting on top of the fridge in my kitchen, um, I can just take it a glance and see how we're doing. In fact, there's a, a really nice app that comes from Switched In as well, uh, that's um, StormCloud, and StormCloud app allows you to see on your phone, on your laptop, or, or any device basically, through a web browser, uh, what is happening with your system. And so keeping a, a check on it. So you're basically keeping your finger on the heartbeat of your uh, standalone power system. So there you go, there's a few tips for sizing a battery storage system, uh, making a little go a long way, particularly if you live off-grid, and after all, it's about the quality of your products terms determines reliability. So very, very happy with the choices that we've made here from uh, Cell Electronic, from Power Plus Energy, and monitoring from Switched In. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it.